uh, the new version of the Tricomp, which is in Studio One Five. Um, as promised, I'd like to cover some of the plugins inside of Studio One Five and just go through some of the mixing techniques and things like that. So let's get into this mix. I'll just play it and show you what it sounds like. Yep, be feeling like I just don't deserve. I be knowing where this game start. Yeah. It be starting with my game hard. I don't wanna stop ever chasing you. Cause you never stop forever chasing me. We be living through some history. All right, so um, the drum kit, you can hear it. It sounds pretty clear in the mix. And I don't have a lot of processing happening with these stems, uh, primarily because I bounce these out of Logic. Uh, this is a project in working, it's not finalized yet, but the mix is getting pretty close um, to kind of where I want it to sit for a rough mix anyway. So let me just explain to you some of the things that are happening here so you can understand the concept first uh, with this mix. So first off, I've got a pipeline plug-in here on the end. Uh, that goes to an external compressor, which is like an SSL style of compressor. I can disengage that and show you exactly what it sounds like without that on there. But the only other processing that I've got really on this is the L2, which is just a limiter that is controlling the uh, overs or the peaks for this mix. So let me play it without that SSL style of compressor. Yep, be feeling like I just don't deserve. I be knowing where this game start. All right, so not a lot changes there. So as you can hear now, this is what I want to show you guys inside of this particular tutorial, and that is the drum kit here. And I'll take off the uh, processing that I've got. So I've got just a pan dial, which is actually doing nothing at the moment. This plugin allows you just to pan the frequency at a crossover point. So you can pan it, you know, the high end frequencies or low end, whatever you want, kind of just to separate the lows from the highs and pan left and right. So it's kind of a neat little trick there, but uh, I don't I don't actually have that any do anything really at the moment. So all that's happening on this mix right now for these drums is this tri-comp. So I'll disengage that and I'll show you what it sounds like uh, with it off. Don't deserve. I be knowing where this game start. Yeah. It be starting with my game hard. I don't want to stop ever chasing you. Cause you never stop forever chasing me. We be living through some history. So you can hear um, when I had it disengaged how flabby or lifeless the drums felt. That's primarily because of the way I'm compressing the drum kit. So what I'm doing here with this compressor is pretty much I'm boosting the lows into the compressor uh, and decreasing the highs from the compressor. So what the compressor is doing, it's pretty much reducing a lot of the low end frequency, pushing that down, and then it's evening out the drum kit. So for the most part, the drum kit seems to be sitting in the right sort of space then at that point. Uh, I'll do, I will show you inside of a meter to... Uh, give you an example of what I'm talking about. So this is the the updated meter. I actually really like this updated. It's kind of cool how they've updated some of this stuff here. Uh, but let me just play it to you without the compressor on. Actually, I'll just bypass it by this thing here. And uh, let's see what it looks like in the meter. Yep, be feeling like I just don't deserve. I be knowing where this game start. Yeah. It be starting with my game hard. Yep, be feeling like I just don't deserve. I be knowing where this game start. Yeah. It be starting with my game hard. I don't want to stop ever. So you can see in the meters, uh, the re reduced volume in the low end frequency. That's kind of what's happened with this reduction using the compressor. Kind of using it like a, I guess, a multi band compressor if you want to look at it like that. But it's using an EQ um, to, to sort of do that, have that control over the, the compression. So. Uh, you can see here it's boosting at a 275, which is kind of the mid, you know, low to mid frequency that it's kind of uh, allowing. And then I'm I'm doing the same thing here, but I'm reducing the frequency with the highs. So if I was to disengage these two here to set them back to equal, uh, you can kind of hear the difference that it makes. Yep, be feeling like I just don't deserve. I be knowing where this game start. Yeah. It be starting with my game hard. I don't. Now, it's not a whole lot, um, but it does help control some of those lows, and then it allows the, the high-end stuff to really kind of stick out and do its thing. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm reducing some of the transients with the high, or I should say fast attack, and then I'm reducing, you know, letting that out with the medium sort of fast release kind of thing there. Uh, the settings here, it's just a three as a knee. Um, it's just by taste. I'm not really, there's no technicals with this. It really is just what it sounds like. If it's good, it's good. Uh, and that's kind of how I'm working with it. 
the gain reduction I'm using a five to one ratio. So, I mean, your settings may differ versus what, what you may or may not use on your mix. But for this particular mix, this is how it really worked out well. And uh, the mix then I'm using a, an 88% mix. So pretty much all of it's wet, except for that, that last bit there from, from 88%. And then a bit of saturation using that state space uh, saturation that they have there. So again, it kind of just gives that that sort of um, thinking or feeling of the mix that it really does kick out the lows. It creates an evenness inside of the mix and then it just allows the drum kit to sit right. The vocals then sit properly and everything else kind of goes in how it should. But this is just a small technique. I want to show you kind of how good the tricomp is. I mean, you can go in there and EQ stuff out. And I think in the past, I may have done that sort of thing. Like I would get in there and I'd just grab an EQ and I'd start trying to EQ the frequencies out that I don't like. But sometimes that doesn't really suit because it sort of removes some of the things that you want from the, the drum kit. You want it to be there. You want it, the full kind of kit to sit there and you don't want to reduce stuff out, causing phase and issues like that. Sometimes it just requires a compressor. So hopefully, you know, this is somewhat benefit to you uh, to see this sort of stuff and just uh, working with this new compressor. I really, I feel like this has just stepped it up to the next level. And you should try this tri-comp out yourself if you've got the new updated version. If not, this tri-comp is still in the original version of Studio 1.3. I think it's even before that. But it's definitely worth looking at. It just seems to work a lot better because the saturation and things like that seem to work even better than they did before. But anyway, hopefully this is some benefit to you. If it's not, uh, remember to dislike the video. <laughs> but if it is, remember to like the video and share it. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.